Hi everyone, let's talk about Noosefjord. And it's early days, as it is with most of the videos that I do, but it's absolutely fantastic. I love this. I, you know, tend to like, really like Uwe Rosenberg games anyway. But this is really, really, really nice. It's one of the, you know, it's it's been compared to Glass Road a lot, mainly based on the player boards, I think, that you, you know, you're putting little buildings down and you've got these uh, forest tiles that you're putting down. It's a very different game to Glass Road, don't get me wrong, but it's that kind of... Uh, you know, not not quite as meaty, but still has a lot to think about, and a quicker game as well. It has that in common with it. It's at two players, especially. This is very very fast. It's really simple to explain. You know, the the fishing phase is the only thing that doesn't really you know. It makes sense, but it doesn't really click uh, that you remember it that quickly. But it's printed on your elder board right in front of you of the order that you feed the fish because that's very important. But the actual structure of the game. The worker placement spots, there's not very many, which would be a relief to people that uh, that didn't really like that in Feast for Odin, that there was a million. There's only a few here, and they tend to get blocked off very quickly. And, you know, all of the, you know, kind of, all of the meaty part and the, the meaty decisions are taken up in the building cards. And you are, there are, there are fewer to think about in a two-player game as well. There are just the nine A's and the six B's that start the game off. And then later on, you get the C's as you do in every other play account. Whereas in, I've, I've played this at two players and at five players. And at five players, you get some A buildings in after a few rounds, and then you get some more B buildings after a few more rounds. Then you're going to get the C buildings. And you know the the differences in that I didn't show in the playthrough, but there are two more uh, decks of cards. There are two completely different decks of cards, three different decks altogether of different cards, and there are rules for combining them as well to make it more different even more uh, but yeah the, there are quite a few that you don't see every game especially the C cards and I imagine yeah when you mix them up it's going to make very interesting combinations and we, as with you know uh, Agricola or well not Agricola anymore actually but Agricola used to have the different decks for the high difficulties and Odin has got things like that like use this deck first this has got the same thing it says use the herring deck although it doesn't say which one's the herring deck <laughs> but uh, yeah you, you will get uh, more interesting interactions in the more advanced cards and they will definitely affect how the game uh, goes. I, I kind of realised towards the end of this, I had engineered this situation where I got so much wood but then the stuff out didn't really need that much wood, it needed fish. I needed better ways of getting fish but uh, and yeah the, the thing that I kept mentioning when I kind of uh, bricked myself in by putting too many forests around that I couldn't get rid of in time to put another uh, another building down. Uh, it's, it's, it can be really tight. You know, you need to keep putting forests out to try and generate the wood unless you've got a really good way of generating it. But then if you, like I got really good at putting it back out, but you fill your board up as well. It's it's a really nice system that's uh, that's quite similar to the, the buildings in Glass Road. They all do these different things. They all need uh, different combinations of resources to put out and they will earn points in varying ways. And, you know, the A buildings are very cheap and but tend to do milder effects. The Bs are better and but more expensive and sometimes are worth points like the ones in this had quite a few worth points like this this club if i could have got that down i would love to have got that down uh, two points per c building because i had two of them but yeah and another another thing that it's got in common with uh, glass road it's another one of those low scoring games as well where it's quite tight between uh, between all of the players but i really like yeah that interaction between the different buildings that come out and the the tightness of your player board as well you do, absolutely do not have enough space just like you know in it's it's a good worker placement system as always that you feel like you've never got enough time to do what you want to get done you've never got enough workers to get it done in a round uh, or there the the banquet table is a really nice feature where everybody wants that to have fish on it but nobody wants to fill it up to help other people especially at the start and i found maybe that's a wariness that will go away as uh, we, we become more familiar with the game because definitely throughout a lot of both of those games the two and the five player game nobody wanted to fill up that banquet table i could kind of uh, especially in the two player game i thought well it definitely benefits me more as long as you can fill it up with more than one plate that's that's the thing that's not really worth it if you just put one fish out there to get the one gold maybe you really need that gold but that fish is absolutely not going to be there by the time it gets back around to your turn no matter how many players there are because somebody is surely going to snap up an elder or use one that they've already got out 
but yeah, that's that's an interesting part of it. The elders themselves. The a, a little bit of a downside is that there are only six elders in the two-player game. More will get added in a game with more players to the point where in a five-player game you have uh, the two normal sets of elders and then uh, a special set that's kind of shuffled and put in a random position underneath the stack so you don't quite know what you're getting. You can get used to, in a game with uh, with other player counts, you can get used to the one, there will usually be piles of two and you'll get used to the one that's on top and then that's going to uncover this uh, maybe more powerful one. In a five player game it's going to have that randomness underneath them. You don't quite know which elder you're going to unlock and the way the game's going to go based on that. In a two player game I suppose it's a, it's, it's a bit of a downside. Uh, not a huge deal but it's a bit of a downside. There are only six and it's always going to be those six. The buildings as I said very very variable. There's going to be tons of those throughout the whole thing but always these six elders in a two player game which is a bit of a shame. The way they work, though, really, really enjoy that. The way uh, you know you get the free activation and you can use your workers on them rather than the very, very tight worker placement spots. But that is tied to that banquet table that you know everyone is wary about filling up. Uh, also, the the share system as well. Uh, uh, that is, it's not a huge part of the game. It's a very nice. Uh, it's a very nice system to be put in it but it's not like it makes it a stock market game or anything like that it's uh, it's just giving up you know you're incentivized to get rid of them because you uh, they're going to cause you minus points at the end of the game and the more shares that you have whether they're yours or other people's they're going to get you more fish into your personal supply it's all very well and good building the boats and getting your haul size up which is another nice thing that i like about it but generally if you don't get more shares or more ways of uh, of, of getting those fish into your supply, they're just going to sit in your reserve. And there is only ever one, I think it's the same in a game with more players as well. Yeah, the other side of the board, that transfer reserve space only fits one person on. As I said, with four and five players, there gets to be spaces where you can copy full up actions, but still, there's very, very little opportunity to transfer that reserve. So having a ton of fish and, and wood or whatever you can get in there, having it all in there is useless because you can't use it and it's very hard to get it transfer out, or you're gonna to have to use your first worker, which means you're gonna give up on another action that's hard to take, like maybe take an elder or build a building might be full by the time it comes back around to you. So you are incentivized in that sense to put your shares out there and for everybody to put their shares out there so that they can reap the benefits. But then there is that fear of, you know, oh, when do we go onto the buy all shares space, uh, which you know gets cheaper as the game goes on as well. So you are incentivized then with, oh, there's, there's a ton of shares in there, but I can actually afford them because there's a two discount because it's such a late round. And then that's going to win me all these points. And then in the last round, I'm going to have a ton of shares that then everybody is going to have to give me a fish, which isn't actually a bad thing unless you are stuck with, you know, your three or maybe five haul size all throughout the game. Uh, the, the fish that you were giving away to other people and your elders are just those fish that would sit there in your reserve. So it's not like it really feels like you're giving anything up. It's the only thing you're really giving up is you're giving that person a point, but then you earned points. You earned two gold when you put your share there and you got rid of one of your minus points. So it's a, it's, that's another really nice system. There's so much to like about this game. That's the, the only things that I kind of... Uh, as I said, not not a huge deal, but that the elders are always going to be the same in a two-play game and that there's only the base six that you can just see from the start. The other thing that I'm not quite sure about, as I said, it's still early days, but the, the I, I'm hung up a little bit on the C cards. Uh, the fact that you get them dealt out to you in the fourth round and then you have two rounds to try and do something with them uh, to before they get put on full display for everyone. Depending on the draw, because you only get two, Everybody gets two though, so the display can end up quite big in a five player game. But by round four, you have kind of been going around building these buildings, maybe getting a load of ships. You've been going in your own direction. And then by round four, suddenly you get these options that, that say these ways of getting points. And that might just be terrible. And someone else on the table might have already done that. And then you have the thing of, well, eventually this is going to go out and really benefit them. And it's, I suppose it's... What I'm trying to say is it's kind of hard to suddenly steer into whatever these sea buildings say to have a chance of building one. Now, someone else might put down one that's perfect for you, but that very much depends on the draw. And as I said, I'm, I'm st it's still early days and I'm not quite sure if it's... Uh, it, it won't be an issue for a lot of people. I'm not sure if it'll end up as an issue for me, but it's just that thing of, you know, we're, we're more than halfway through the game now, or we are half just about halfway aren't we, at the start of uh, round four just about to be halfway, we then get these end game conditions that are suddenly, 
Oh, well, I've already done that. Brilliant. I will just find out, I will just find a way of getting these resources and then I can plonk this down quite nicely. Uh, in the, but in a lot of times, you'll look at the card and just be like, well, I am miles away from doing that. And it's, is it worth me doing that? Is it worth me spending the whole rest of the game to try and do this? But then again, there are no buildings out here that earn any points. So I'm just really limiting myself if I don't do that. That's, as I said, I'm not sure how much of an issue that'll turn out to be, but it definitely doesn't stop me saying that this is just fantastic it's just a lovely easy to learn fast to play euro where you've still got tons of meaty decisions and a lot of it is going to be very different every game and just another fantastic game from Uwe Rosenberg that's Nussfjord uh, thanks for watching everyone I'll see you for the next game bye